Uh, this episode of the Beyonce Bible is brought to you by Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code VAMOS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code VAMOS. What are you waiting for? Go whack your weeds and make sure your balls look great during the process. Beyonce. Hello, BL Seasters. Welcome to another episode of the BL Survival with Rob Mulholland. And Mickey P. Kerr. So much going on in the world of BL this it's week. It's been a huge week for BL Seasters. It really this has. Week. It's been like, it's been crazy, hasn't it? Everything's yeah. been popping off. Yeah. Uh, for good and bad, obviously. It's been yeah. wonderful and tragic in equal measure. So we will be covering all aspects of that today. Let's, let's start, start with the good. Let's start with the good news yeah. before we get to the terribly sad. Um, so, Marcelo, so. I'm sure you've seen Marcelo Bielsa has been nominated for the FIFA's award for best men's coach of the year. Amazing. It's, I mean, it's a worldwide award. Is yeah. it shortlisted with about four other coaches? There's four other coaches. It's Jurgen Klopp, Zinedine Zidane, uh, Hans, uh, Hans Flick from Bayern. Yeah. Uh, and uh, who else is? Oh, uh, jo- Julian Lopetegui. For uh, never heard of him, but yeah, I know the team. Yeah, one of the teams I thought, yeah, I won know the you. Europa League. So, like, and uh, do you know what's weird that every single manager on there has won glorious honors this year, but yeah. there's one manager who's just won a championship second tier, yeah, and it's Bielsa. And it just goes to show how revered he is throughout the world, yeah. And it's you know, for once, FIFA actually getting something right, it's, it's yeah, baffling. He, he's so highly thought of. Uh, around the world and and like I say in FIFA and everybody just is in awe of this man well everyone who you know knows what they're talking about there's been plenty of idiots this week in the British press who've been lining up oh why is Bielsa it was only in the championship because they've paid no attention to anything he does they They don't don't understand they don't get what we get but like the thing is the facts are there on paper if you want to look at just stats you can see the amazing job he's done you can Mm. see the fact that Leeds were 39 points off the lead when he arrived that's where Mm -hmm. we finished the season before he 13th arrived. in the championship with mm-hmm. with going nowhere fast and he spent uh, like the net spend is like so it's basically well, nothing well i saw a tweet that said nine of the 11 players started against stoke mm-hmm. but it, that's not true i think it was eight yeah but still I mean, and that's eight out of the 10 outfield players yeah and that is this is just incredible. And he's coached this, this them team, to be that good. yeah, they're taking apart the Premier League at times. Mm. We, we battered Arsenal. We'll talk yeah. about the Arsenal game. We battered them. We'd have beaten them with the Ad Eleven. Yeah, we really would. Might well have done. But yeah. yeah, this is it. We've taken the game to them, he's, and like he's st- taken an average Championship side and made them into worse top than 10, average, top eight. Yeah, worse than average. Mm. He's a struggling Championship side. And, and took them a potential top eight, top six. Purely I, purely by coaching. And like that is what the uh, award is for. It's, yeah, it's coaching. So, he is the best coach on earth. We know this. Yeah. It, it, it's incredible. And like, I'm so pleased that he's been nominated. But we need you, BLC, because it's a public vote. So we need you. Obviously, we know that we can count on your vote. We will, I will put a link in the description to this episode. If you're listening on podcast or watching the YouTube, there will be a link in the description of this. Go on FIFA's website and vote. Vote for Bielsa. Can I just say what he, his reaction to it? I mean, a great... Oh, of course. I mean, Pope came up with some... Adam Pope, the uh, the Leeds uh, journalist. Uh, yeah. I mean... Can I, can I guess what it was? Was it, uh, fuck all you bitches, I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> has he gone full Zlatan? I am the special one. Marcelo is never beaten. No, of course he hasn't. What I mean, has he just said? a comparison, right? Like Jose Mourinho, who does so many fucking adverts. I mean, it's just like oh, gambling adverts as well. Yeah, yeah. Just keep, you, you are an incredibly rich person. Yeah, you don't Why need do to be you doing need that. to do that? And, and it's not just Jose Mourinho, it's it's loads of other yeah, well paid yeah. celebrities. Oh, or, yeah. And like, you, you're never going to get uh, like Bielsa doing an advert for Foxy fuck. Bingo, are you? <laughs> it's not happening. This is why he's the best. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> really uncomfortable yeah. and it's camera just like just needs the money really badly <laughs> he's yeah. had to spend it all on fines yeah <laughs> man i've just got rebuilding a... all his previous clubs this is it i've got a training ground habit that needs fixing That's right. i've got a hotel habit i can't help it <laughs> so anyway what did he say bielsa on being shortlisted for fifa best men's coach to be nominated i want to do the accent <laughs> to be nominated is an honor dot 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 but a coach is an appendix of the players and the technical staff 
So mm-hmm. as always, he's the one that's saying, no, 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 it's them, not me. They they deserve all the plaudits, which is so predictable, so Bielsa. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't really expect anything else from him, but it's it's absolutely wonderful. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I don't know, even know if I hope he wins. I, I feel like just that shortlist is... It, it's it's gratification for for me really it's just amazing to, to, for him to be one of the best coaches in the world and recognized uh in in the from the championship you is know that's, that's great that's bielsa only bielsa could do that i don't think any other manager is capable of doing that well no that's why he's the best coach because like that is he did a job that no one else would be capable of doing i think klopp will win it yeah and sedan's look, on there isn't he i mean uh, sedan's the one that i'm i query right like look Ray what's I- he done well, they won La Liga and they had a record for they only conceded 10 goals all season. But if you can turn... Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean... That, they only conceded 10... No, yeah, that's a lie. No, no, it's true. Like, they only conceded they, 10 they broke, goals. They broke La Liga's record for No, they didn't. Defense. Yeah, they did. You're joking. That's me. why I got nominated for breaking the record. They only conceded 10 goals. Yeah. They must have been playing a bloody oh, bland, so boring. boring. That is a boring style. They were so boring to watch. That's boring. It's rubbish. Yeah. It should be chucked off. It's one of my biggest disappointments in football is that Zidane has turned into such a boring manager. Yeah. He's such an amazing creative player. Well, he knows what he didn't like playing against. Yeah. He knows how that. to stop creative players. So, he was one. But I, I just don't find that as impressive. And like, you know, <sighs> winning things Shots. with big teams who already have that advantage. Like, um, someone on, uh, like, a, I've got a comedian's Facebook group where we talk about football. And most of idiots but one of them made a very good point Bielsa's the odd one out on that list because he's the only one who didn't take over a team and make them a little bit better you know like uh, they, they all all the other, other people on the shortlist took took over like good clubs and yeah. made them better they had huge potential them, yeah but they already had such a high level and high budget to work with. They were nearly winning things. Yeah. You know, and now they are winning things. Yeah, this is it. So whereas Leeds were down and out. Absolute basket case. We were down and out. Basket yeah. case is a great description because yeah. there were there were and the players were shit. Yeah, the same players. They probably Who thought still are a bit shit. would do this. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't believe it. The the that is the we have got the man for man. Mm. The, when it comes to skill, flair, world-class talent, we are fucking nowhere in that league. We've probably got the on worst... Paper. On paper, probably got the worst squad. Ah, uh, maybe Fulham. But, uh... Yeah, like, maybe. Although, although uh, like, Bielsa did say something great about Klitsch. Did you see in the press yeah. today for the uh, for the Everton um, game, which I think will win 10-0 at least, because that's what Bielsa does. It, it gives you that hope. So the Klitsch could be in any team in the world. Which yeah. is and and that's a guy that's come from nowhere. Well, yeah, he was looking well, like he was out of the club. But is it? I think if you if you are measuring a coach, the way you do it is by the amount they improve the resources they're given. I thought we were going to say <laughs> it's a meter stick then. <laughs> You wouldn't even do a meter stick as well. You'd have a tape measure, not a meter stick. No, you just run out of stick, wouldn't you? <laughs> You'd have to draw a little. <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark on, his, on his waist. Yeah, maybe do it with the old trundle wheel. Yeah, uh, and like, to trundle wheel up him. Yeah. <laughs> But no, like that's how you measure it. It's like um, it's like in Formula One, right? It's hard to say who's the best driver because yeah. if you're in a better car, yeah. you're going to beat people in a worse car. You know, uh, so- well, speak for yourself. <laughs> Yeah, well, a Formula One driver will. Okay. But um, it's the same thing in football. If you're given a different club, it's either easier or harder in, mm-hmm. in order to achieve. It, and like Leeds is a playing manager mode on on difficult level, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think that I could probably take over a world-class squad mm. and win quite a lot of games oh, by yeah. just going, like, you know what you were doing before? Just keep doing it. Well, that's often what works at like really <laughs> yeah. big clubs full of like Galacticos is the softer touch. It's what Ancelotti's good at. He doesn't overtrain his players, mm. so they like him. Yeah. That's a very different style. Look, if you, if you know, you could put, like, literally, like, my nan in charge of PSG and she's going to win the title in France. Yeah, she is. You know. It, yeah, I'd like to see that. That would be incredible. Yeah. Barbara Hill going mad. Just dropping the front three. Yeah, Just, she would. Like, to be fair, she'd strike some fear into him. Like, mm. she would say, yeah, maybe that's a move for PSG if yeah. Tuchel doesn't work out. Yeah, she'd be but, knitting him all the jumpers and yeah. stuff like that. Like, where it presses. <laughs> I've made you all a flapjack for half time. <laughs> half time flapjacks. But, uh, yeah, it's so, uh, obviously, I think in terms of achievement, I think Bielsa's street ahead. So go give him a vote, obviously. Yeah. If you're watching this, you agree with us. So give him a vote and like, let's make him win because the amount that it will upset Gabby Ogbonlahor is totally worth it. He will not go to the award ceremony, will he? Uh, Bielsa? No. He's not going to deliver a speech, is he? He might send one via he'll send video his, link. He'll send his coach. Yeah, he'll write something. Who deserves it more. Yeah, exactly. You know. So there we go. That is uh, beautiful news that we're delighted about. Let's, uh, shall we go to correspondence now and yeah. have a little bit of that? Correspondence. 
Okay, so thanks so much as ever for your correspondence, the emails, the tweets, the what else do you do? YouTube comments. comments. That's this the one. week we actually have an actual postal letter. No way. Actual bit of paper sent to us by Bishop Sprague. Oh, Bishop Carey you, Sprague. Bishop Sprague. Well done, Bishop. One of our uh, members of the inner sanctuary of the church. You may see there are some new stickers on the laptop today. Bishop Sprague sent us those. So thank you so much, Bishop Big Sprague. Up Bishop Sprague. There's a couple of tiny spaces left on here. So if you've got any really small Bielsa stickers, send them my way. Because uh, I'd yeah. love to slap them I haven't on. got any, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. All right. Well, DM us if you want my address. Oh, that's for them. For yeah. yeah. You yeah, can do yeah, that as well. Yeah. Don't DM me. For my how did they, how did they get you? Oh, you DM'd you for your address. He sent me a message, yeah, on Patreon. Sprague's good, isn't he? He's clever. So what he said here is this is the note he included. Salutations, blessed Father Robert, Father Mickey. Thank you for getting back to me with a forwarding address. Uh, please find stickers as promised. Many blessings, Bishop Sprague, and a Vamos Bielsa Carajo on it. Lovely. Oh, I love that. He's lovely. I love the way that all Bielsistas seem to write really well. They yeah. seem to be so polite. There's a lot of erudite Bielsistas. We love it. Yeah. And speaking of which, we have got a, another message in here. This one came from Javier Altimiras. Uh, is I pronounce that right? No, but I'm going to go with it. Altimiras. How do you spell Javier? Is it with a J? No, it's with an X. So it could oh, be a right. Chavier. It, it depends be... where you're from, how you pronounce an X in uh, Spanish. Really? Yeah, because like Chavi, because he's um, from Catalonia, it's Chavi. But like, like a chav. Yeah. He's a bit but then there's Shabby Alonso because he's from oh, somewhere yeah, else. Je, so it could be a je, je, soft it, could, je. it can also be a hurry sort of oh, thing as well. Oh, one on. of them. What's, the, what's yeah. with the upside down question mark? That is, you just have that at the start of a sentence. You just, you just have it at the start of a so sentence. So you know there's a question coming from the start. Sort of makes sense. Really? Because it brackets the sentence. That's a better idea. Yeah. Because otherwise, yeah. in English. Because sometimes you can be reading something and, yeah. go, and then it goes, a question mark? Yeah, yeah. So you've got to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you go. So I am, yeah, because when you ask the question, it's like you ask it. Did you, think you ask it a little bit tone. different? Yeah, yeah, you do because I, I just did a different tone then. To I did, I did my nice question mark at the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was like, uh, yeah. Okay, let's continue. That's a better thing that in Spanish that we should bring into the English language. But there's no room for that here now. We've got some correspondence. <laughs> Thank you, Mickey. Let's go back on track. That, that was a long, convoluted way. Anyway, Javier, Xavier, uh, however you pronounce that. Thanks so much for oh, the correspondence. Xavier, <laughs> Xavier could be. I suppose. Where it is, is hi guys. The show's great. Thanks. I mean, That's always know, a good start. Start by compliment. In. Love it. Here's a translation of Bielsa's famous definition of football. Cheers, Pedro. Oh no, this is from a different guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Pedro Mickey. This is from Pedro. <laughs> okay. This is from Pedro. Yeah. Right. Javier has sent another letter that we'll get to in a minute. We're not quoting this, by the way. No, I know. I know. <laughs> We're leaving this in. We can make me look a plan because I've been a, I've been an idiot. Let's go with Pedro. Then what's, we'll go with Pedro. what's Pedro's full name? Um, Pedro Gregro. I think it like right. I think then username was like Pedro Mickey, but I think he might be saying your name. I'm confused. Anyway, Pedro, we'll go with. He'll know who it is. Let us know. Well, we've got another corrections to do in a second. Oh, uh, great. Pedro, full of them. Uh, it sounds great. His translation of Bielsa's famous definition of football. What is football for you? Asked the journalist, and Bielsa replied, "We were all good friends. We liked to play together. We had a good time together. We tried to do our best, attack a lot, and then get it back with the illusion of attacking again. And we hoped for the company of luck. That's football, guys. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes, one of the best. We hope Bielsa for the quotes. company of luck. Yeah, that's football, guys. That, that's football, guys. That, that is. It's playing with friends." And it's attacking. No one, no one goes. Do you see that? Diff- that uh, you, when you're with your friends mm. in the park, doing one that twos. Nil, nil last night. Yeah, but you, you, know, you, you do one twos on great passing moves. Yeah. Two or three of you, and that's the buzz in it. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you know, you, you're like he passes it to you. It goes through your legs. You let it go. The other guy passes it to you, and you score. Yeah. And it's like that's like great. That's oh, the joy of Bielsa. No one goes like yeah. You know, oh, let's defend together. Yeah. You, you must be attack. a solid back four down the park. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gonna play a bit of Catanaccio. Yeah. Sure. Just, yeah, with the with the offside. And you bring your mate who's just Lino flag as well. No you one grows outside at the park, you dickhead. Like no one grows up dreaming of being a defensive midfielder. No, do they you? don't. They no. don't, do they? Of a linesman. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, I, I don't know why I don't know where that linesman came yeah. from. But yeah, because we don't we want to attack and it's about you know what, and that says about a lot about Bielsa's theory on football and what he tries to do at every club he goes to is bring the amateur spirit. We've heard that before. The mm. amateur bring the park. 
like you play with your mates, bring that to the stadium. Yeah. And that's what we want to see. That's what football's about. It's about friendship. It's about winning. It's about scoring. It's about winning in style, isn't it? That's yeah. what you dream of doing. Uh, we actually asked Ricardo Lenari um, basically this question, so that'll be later on in the interview. Um, I, the correction, I've just remembered, from yeah. last week, we've got to make a correction. We get things wrong on this show. We we're do. happy to correct We're good them. at getting things wrong. This one was a pretty stellar one from us. Uh, last week, you may remember us being confused by Aussie Rules football in Saint of the Week. Um, there was uh, an Aussie Rules player who um, shouted out his opponent, basically, in his victory speech. It yeah. was like really uh, graceful. And what was his talking, name again? Uh, um, Cam Munster. Cam, Cam, Cam Munster. Munster. Wow, you've monstered that from nowhere. <laughs> Thank you. And like We were saying how confused we were by Aussie rules. Well, it turns out we were so confused it was the wrong sport. Yeah, he's a rugby, rugby league, league player. player. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. just saw an Australian with, oh, with a rugby ball yeah. and thought it was Aussie rules. God. Happy to clear that up. Very sorry. I love rugby. By the way, Australian rugby league is amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. better than English rugby league. Well, I know what's going on in rugby league, at least. Anyway, there we go. Happy Unless to clear it's cast tigers, of course. Apologies, um, because, you know, rugby league is the good rugby. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and well done to Cam again. You've been sent of the week last week. Let's remember you once again for your incredible deed. Yes. Now, uh, we will get to Xavier, and I'm going to say Xavier. I'm going to say X. I'm going to say Xavier, and here's the reason why. Right, okay. Let's go into his letter. Hello, guys. My name is Xavier. I'm from Barcelona. Oh. So, because Xavi is pronounced Cha, uh, I think this might be... That's my guess, anyway. Feel free to correct us. Yeah, we're, 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 we're basing this around Alonso, aren't we, essentially? Well, no, Xavi, I'm basing it on. Oh, right. X-A-V-I. Xavi. Xavi. Barcelona Xavi. Yeah, that's the one. Xavi and Iniesta. That's yeah. what I'm what talking a, about. What a midfield duo. They weren't bad. Anyway, my name's Xavi. I'm from Barcelona, Spain, and I'm a huge Bielsa fan since the early 90s. I want to share some of the best stories about Bielsa. Both stories are told by a well-known sports journalist and friend of Marcelo. I attached the original video in Spanish just for your reference. We will link to that in the description. This is good. It's not It's not praise the podcast. Could it's have been not, better. But, yeah. I, but well done for... It just sounds great already. It's really nicely paragraphed off as well. Yes. Every time... So, it's great, isn't it? Every time. <laughs> so the Sorry. first story uh, is from Euro 96. This sports journalist, and he says that we called him Maldini, uh, Maldinini because his last name is Maldonado, meets Marcelo in a hotel. Maldini is famous for ha having thousands of games in VHS tapes. He had the biggest collection in Spain at that time. Wow. The biggest collection of football magazines. Maldini loaned Marcelo about 40 or 50 issues of the ma magazine African Soccer, an English magazine all about African football. Of course, that's what Bielsa wanted. Yeah. Uh, Maldini tells him, take them, Marcelo. Give them back to me whenever you want. A day later, first thing in the morning, Marcelo shows up at Maldini's room with all the magazines. Again, like 40 or 50. Maldini says, Marcelo, what are you doing? I told you to keep them for a while. Marcelo's answer was, no, no, no. I read them all already. I spent the whole night reading them. <laughs> That's he doesn't sleep. He doesn't sleep, does he? It's amazing. How do you... He doesn't consume sleep. that much information. He might just have like four on the go. At I once. don't think he sleeps. I just I have no idea. He's he's incredible, isn't he? Yeah, it? he's like Fight Club, isn't he? It's a level of processing of information that is at a level that I've never encountered. Like, no, being able to take in that much information. Yeah. And learn it that quickly. Like this is why we say the man's a genius. Do you ever, get, do you ever read a book and then, like you get you, you get to the end of a page and like you just like oh, I don't know what I've clue. Mate, that is read. my whole experience of reading anything. Yeah, me too. So, yeah. What's the point in that? Mate, I can get to the end of a fire exit sign and not remember what I've written. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just like, away, yeah. I'm just like by the end of it, it's like fire what? Uh, <laughs> Why is it warm in it? Is it warm in it? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's the first story. And look, right, that story one off to a flyer. If that was your whole email, Xavier, we, you'd be message of the week smashing it. We've got another story, Mick. Here we go. In the same email, so, there's two stories. I love this. I love so, this guy. Uh, Maldini used to work for Bielsa. Having one of the biggest collection uh, of VHS tapes, Bielsa used Maldini as some kind of video assistant. When he was coaching Argentina, Marcelo asked Maldini for all the games on VHS of Zanetti. Uh, you know, Javier Zanetti. Yeah. He used to play, uh, famous right back, used to play for Inter Milan. He was a great player. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Maldini gave it to him, and Marcelo was not happy about it. He said, no, 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 I want all the games, even pre-season. So Maldini gave, them, uh, gave him those also. Marcelo's not happy again. He said, I want all the games, even the ones that Inter played against amateur teams. <laughs> Remember in the 90s, it was common for big teams to play against amateur teams during pre-season. Maldini said, why do you want those against amateur teams? Amateur teams, why? What are you going to learn? 
And Marcelo's answer was brilliant. He said, really simple. If I put Zanetti as a winger and he tells me, I've never played as a winger coach, then I can tell him, that's not true. You played as a winger once in a friendly game against Caporetto. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, yeah. You, and he you, says, you'd be scared if you managed to say that. Are you like, fucking hell, mate. You know more about my life than I do. Uh, he says, I uh, hope you enjoy both stories. Thank you for everything you're doing. Xavier, amazing. Oh, thank, thank you, you for Chavier. that. Thank Those you. are so good, aren't they? What a great city Barcelona is. One of my favourites. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just like, incredible. Right, so that also answers a bit of our question. We've talked about this before. We wondered what where Bielsa got all these tapes from. Yeah, that's right. One of them's this journalist, journalist Maldonini. The journalist. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Well, th- thank you so much for that. That's We're, we're learning so much more about, about Bielsa in every episode, aren't we? And yeah. that's the point of this bloody thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like Those are awesome stories. Absolutely love those. So, uh, yeah, I'll pop a link um, so you can watch the video in Spanish because I know, uh, like, mate, literally like a third of our viewers are now Spanish. So, <laughs> really? hola. <laughs> hola. Hola. Yeah, you say hola, you don't say the H. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting the wrong way around. Hola. 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 Hola, hombre. Hombres and uh, yo quiero bebe leche, bebe leche, bebo yo quiero bebo leche. Apologies, that means I would like to drink milk. I was that say I'm sure that's milk, isn't it? Smashing Let's, it. Yeah. So there we go. Thank you so much. That wraps up our correspondence. Loved it. Thank you so much. Bebe. <laughs> you may have noticed that this episode is sponsored. By- <laughs> You may have noticed at the top of this episode, it was sponsored by, and still is. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Man- the, um, <laughs> sorry. This episode is sponsored. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped are premium male grooming tools. So if you've got a bit of an undergrowth on the go, you, you can use the Lawnmower 3.0 available from manscaped.com. Today, we're going to talk to you, though, uh, not about your pubis. We're going to talk about nostril yeah, hairs. Yeah, I mean, have you got many nostril hairs? Who knows? I've got an amazing box. You could have this box because it is the Weed Whacker and it's available on that link. You just got to click. Manscaped.com. So uh, if you open it up there, the Weed Whacker is a premium top quality bit of what, kit. What I like about it is it's got, it, it's just a small head. You feel like there should be an attachment to this head, but it, it's just a small head. But then yeah. you think about it, it's got to go up your nose, hasn't well, it? Well, this is it. And the blades are sort of covered. So you just got that yeah. sort of, you just basically put a metal cylinder up your nose. I'm going to go for it again. You have a little garment, see if there's anything new up there. I've already done mine, so I'm smooth. Huh? There you go. Oh, yeah. You'll oh, hear. that's feeling good. That is feeling good. It's like, it's addictive, this. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. That's, that is the spot. Because it just like it just rips through, doesn't it? It doesn't like oh, pull or anything. It's great. It's, no, nice it, it's perfect. Yeah. And uh, I, I think a, a lot of women are very put off by nose hairs, aren't Yes. They? 79% of partners polled admitted long nose hair is a major turn-off. So, that's nearly four in five. You know, if you're uh, if you're not getting any attention from the missus lately, and look, trust, we could, we've all been there. And a lot of birds are looking at you from below because men are generally taller. And, and gentlemen, what, you know. What's or, the first thing they say? Your nose hairs. Yeah, so get them sorted out. It's, it's one of those things where, like, it's kind of like, that. that's the standard, right? Like, do, your mu- do your mum a favour and buy it for your dad. Yes, that is a that nice is thing a, to it's do. It's a bloody good... And get in touch with your mum and say, hey, mum, you'll never guess what I've got my dad. Yeah, they'll be delighted. A weed whacker. Ooh. <laughs> and get it with 20% off by going to manscaped.com and using the code VAMOS to let them know that we sent you. You also get, with that code, 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Cordless. VAMOS. Manscaped. Carajo. Rechargeable. Smart design. Waterproof. <laughs> So now let's have a little look at the week's games very quickly. Obviously, first and foremost, Leeds United drew nil-nil with Arsenal. It was a great nil-nil. It was. We battered him nil-nil. It was proper one of those. Hit the post three times. It was very Bielsery, wasn't it? Yeah, Rodrigo looked great. (sighs) Bamford was unlucky. I thought his uh, his strike actually where the keep. Yeah, he he put the ball with the right foot. Oh, there's a couple of really good good efforts. And like that header, that header was a good bloody header. It's a really good header because like this is what I think people forget sometimes. These players now we're in the Premier League, especially you're up against some of the best goalkeepers in the world. Yeah, you've got to hit corners. 
you can't just get it on target with it's pace. Saved. You've yeah. got to hit it hard into corners. I, I think that that championship uh, in the championship. I think I think Bamford's got one of them in in the back of the net. It's particularly mm. that one that the saver when he hit it behind the defender it, 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 into the bottom left oh, with his yeah. right foot, and it came at him quickly. It was a really good strike. Yeah, it was. He played Keeper well. Got down to that. The whole team was fantastic again. Uh, we did, battered him. Didn't get the rewards they deserved. Do you know what? Credit to Mesley because we did batter him. Saka mm. is a great little player. Yeah, he is. Really yeah. good, and he he did, uh, getting forward on the break. He uh, he had a one on one, mm. and Mesley was on brilliant it. when he was scrambling, staying on his feet. Boom. Yeah, brilliant. really good. And that that was he didn't do much wrong, Saka. No, nah. and that's a game that we lose if we've got a shit keeper. Yeah, it is. So uh, we're desperately unlucky. I thought we were like the whole team was fantastic. We battered him. We spanked the crossbar bar that many times. It's just unlucky. Those games happen. It's every coming now and for again. Rodrigo, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and you like, can't, when you, you look what? at the stats, you just cannot. You, you cannot. Uh, underestimate the job that Bielsa is doing at Leeds and yeah. how dominant we Mate, are. At some point, both Rodrigo and Rafinha are going to score screamers. Like I, I just feel like we're about to go on a run where we have five oh, or yeah. six on the on the shot. We we look, we're looking great. I think it starts against Everton. You know, I think they've been really unlucky. I think far. they're a perfect team for us to go and play against. I don't mm. think they're, they're not. Everyone's vulnerable. There's vulnerable. no one that is invulnerable. Yeah. I think Liverpool... They're not fit. I don't think Everton are as fit as other teams, you know. Oh, God, I can't wait. I had to Bellerin did say something. He said, it, "You don't when you're sat at home, you don't mm. realise how hard it is to play against Leeds. Yeah. They are. They, they, they know how they want to play and they, and they go about it. It was really really complimentary about Leeds' yeah. style of play. I thought that was a nice thing to yeah, say. Yeah, I like Isabella and he seems a good lad. So uh, Fast as fuck. Yeah. So, uh, really good, really, like, really, really encouraging. I think we take the positives from that. We and battered we him. We, batted we, him. we think about last season we lost 1-0. Mm. We battered him in the first half. The second half we were dominated. I just wish that, that Pepe hadn't got sent off because I we think, I think with 11... Yeah, it did make it harder for us mm. because they've got a world-class goalkeeper yeah. who got in his six <laughs> for Germany, but he is world class they've got world class they've got brilliant defenders yeah. and they got they tucked in and they decompressed well yeah. when they got the chance but well, it we just made we just don't we don't do well against 10 men I think I don't how, like, how, we did do well this is the thing it's one of those no we don't like, score against 10 men do well, we? we're we just hit, not like other teams we can hit the do. post that many times it was a freak so you know but how many freaks are we going to have anyway I think I think great great performance, great performance and another point next. on the board exactly. fair dues. speaking of another point on the board uh, Newell's had a one all draw with Talleres, uh, another great goal for Maxi. He, he's still going strong. Maxi Rodriguez is 30, 39 or 38, 39. Yeah. Still going he's strong. my age. Yeah. It and makes me feel like I, I could make that comeback. Mm, I don't know if your knees can take it, mate. Well, I said, I did say to one guy that I, that I could score a thousand. I said, we've we compared Maradona to Pele. We'll talk about it later. Mm. But I said, I could score a thousand goals in Brazil. I still stand by that. <laughs> anyway. Honestly, they called me Magic Kerr. I was fucking incredible. <laughs> Anyway, great one all result. Uh, well, it's yeah. not great. It's okay. Um, but good performance from Newells. Uh, moves them, you know, they're still in third in that league. But like they're in, hey, no, they're in the top distance. three. Yeah. Let's look at it differently. Big game against Boca now, which is going to have a oh, huge significance. That is tasty. We just said earlier, didn't we, off air? It's off. Huge significance. How we'll talk, good we'll talk would about it be if we could get to... I know. Uh, anyway, Velez had another. Fans. Moving on to Velez Sarsfield, they won two 0 against Deportivo Get Cali. It. So Velez moved to the top of their uh, mini league, so they're smashing it. Uh, in well, it was uh, the Argentinian league. It's now called the Copa Diego Maradona. Uh, oh, that that's, tournament. That's, so that's that's lovely. Dead cool. Uh, Bilbao beat Betis four 0 so they're up to eighth. Was it fake Betis? <laughs> Which one was it? No, it was the real one. Oh, well done. That's incredible. Um, yeah, so they they uh, they beat them 4 0. So they're up to eighth now, absolutely flying after that. They so are. Great performance. Really good to see They've them. They've really come on strong in. last few weeks. Yeah, really good to see them click in. Uh, Marseille have gone the other way. They lost 2 0 to Porto. They're not going anywhere in the Champions League. It's, it's been a disaster from the top. This, the, this the year's Champions, Champions League, League campaign has been. Yeah, a sometimes fast. that happens. Sometimes it happens. It's yeah. A, it happens to Real Madrid sometimes. Yeah, so yeah, it's just not one of those years in the Champions League. It happens to the best clubs in Europe. Don't yeah. worry about it. Let's move on. You yeah, got there. Fox you got the there. Now. Yeah, but now they're Let's there. Let's get there again. They're shit. Yeah, so it happens. At last, drew one all with Tigres. Not bad point that. And uh, Club America lost one nil to Guadalajara. So oh, is that the derby? Uh, no, it's Atlas are from Guadalajara. You're forgetting that. It's Atlas Guadalajara and Guadalajara FC are the two Guadalajara teams. Oh, and this is Club America. Ah, oh, getting confused. Ah, no. Easily happens. Easily done. Anyway, uh, that wraps us up for the results for the Bielsa teams this week. So fingers crossed, going into the next set of games. Decent overall. Yeah, not too bad this week. 
So if you love this podcast and you'd like to get even more, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Bielsa Bible. You can get extended versions of the interviews and some merch and perks. Come join us in the inner sanctum. Yeah, come be, be a father or a mother. Yeah, a bishop. Be- all sorts of titles available. You can also buy yourself some merch at bielsabible.com forward slash shop. Get yourself a mug for Christmas. T-shirts, a mugs, favor. all those sort of things. I do want to let you know uh, we are experiencing mad delays on shipping. Uh, our suppliers have had some logistical issues. So oh, it could, God. like, I can't guarantee how quickly anything will arrive. Uh, mugs are all right at the moment. Get yourself a mug, fuck it. Mugs have been okay, but we are experiencing issues, so it might not be that quick. I apologise. Um, but we've got a little bit of uh, news we want to sort of tease. Let's just tease it in there. Let's we'll just... just tease. Just, uh, if you're a fan of this podcast, we've got a little something coming up, a little uh, side project. We have. It's not Bielsa involved, no, but, but it us, is too. Us. We're going to do a thing, so watch out for that real yeah, soon. Yeah, and if you could watch it, we'd be grateful. Mm. In the future. So, as ever, we go to our regular feature, Saint of the Week. Saint of the Week. Saint of the Week. Now, in Saint of the Week this week, we were initially, we thought we had a complete slam dunk uh, this week. We wanted to, we were going to shout out Liam Cooper and the various staff at Leeds United who uh, arranged amazing for... Amazing gesture, wasn't it? Amazing gesture, arranged for a young lad uh, with cancer to um, basically walk out as a virtual mascot with the team. With Never a, seen that before. It's the first time yeah, and great. it was a really beautiful way of making it happen. So we thought that would be... The obvious one this he's week. He's a great guy, Cooper. He's he is. Do, he's, he's does this all the time. He's yeah. got a constant thing about, really about helping... Uh, work. Yeah, he is, about helping sick children, and yeah. he just wants to keep doing it. So what a yeah. great captain he is, is, so is for us. That would have been in a normal week more than enough, um, but this is not a normal week, it's especially not. not in the world of uh, BFC sisters football. and football. Football in general. Yeah, sadly, uh, yesterday as we record, we lost Diego Armando Maradona at the age of 60. The greatest to ever, the greatest to ever do it. We've lost, and a, a leper and an icon. You know, he he was, um, he, he himself said he was, you know, he, he was he was Newell's. He, yeah. he was always a leper. Yeah, and play, yes. play for the club, of course. Yeah. Do you know what? When it, when I found the news out, mm. it was about four four half four yesterday, yeah. and uh, I generally had, a, had a, I feel I feel really sad about it. I, I had a moment. I was in the kitchen and. I had a little moment to myself. I was yeah. like, I, cause, because to me, Diego has always been the best. Yeah. Always. He's I the mean, greatest. When I first got into football heavily, it was a 1990 World Cup. I mm. was eight, nine. I'd been, obviously I was obsessed by football, mm. but that, that I will remember that World Cup for the rest of my life. And there's not much I do remember. Yeah. I, I had this sticker book, which was, I've still got, the 1990 World Cup, I filled every sticker and I, and, I, and it was when, there's the olden days, there's no internet, you couldn't read, and all the goals were, um, mama, mama, <laughs> it totally is, lots of, <laughs> but the, all the goals were drawn, yeah. drawn out, all the famous World Cup goals, and I, cool. and, I, and I used to obsess over these goals and and the, the, the front cover, it was Maradona holding the World Cup yeah, because 86 that, was still raw, yeah, yeah, you know, it was four years prior and, that and, iconic photo. Yeah, it really is, and he's and he's and he just looked like a god. Yeah, he was. He's just like he's the coolest player to ever play. Like he just by far because he was so naturally gifted. It yeah. just seemed like it just came to him so easy. And then to he's the most naturally gifted footballer there's ever been and there yeah. ever will be. Yeah, and um, you know, like I've I've seen some like sort of like obituaries and reports that are like his lifestyle off the pitch tarnished his reputation. Did it hell? Fucking love that. Did it hell? He's a the more drugs you take, the better you are for me. Well, like, the more the more processed she was in drugs <laughs> He smashed it. Look, what a life that man led. Like, I think, oh, I think it's really important to celebrate his life because he lived... He is a maverick. He lived with the pedal to the metal the whole time. Yeah, he did, didn't he? He, he never let up. What a life. Do you know what, though? As a, to maybe excuse that a little bit, he, when he was 15, he was, he, he was this child prodigy, mm. obviously, because that's what he's always been. Yeah. And he, they went on this incre- incredible running streak of about 230 games where they never lost this, this youth, this youth team. But he got his debut in the men's first team at 15. Mm. He comes from nothing, yeah. poverty. He was responsible for his entire family financially mm. at the age of 15. Yeah, yeah. And to, 
to have that burden, that pressure, and, and to have that star-struck that famous. famous when you're that young yeah. affects everybody who is... Yeah. How many ki- famous TV actors that have, that are, you know, Macaulay Culkin, etc., mm. who have gone on to become bloody heroin addicts? Yeah, yeah. Because the... So much pressure at So much age. pressure at such a young age. And he developed this all the side. The, apparently, there's the Diego, who's this loving, kind, mm. really gentle soul. And there's Maradona, who is the person he developed to try and cope. Yeah. And I think that... I think that, you know, it comes from a background where I think, you know, they had nothing. He was he was literally the, the breadwinner at 15. And it, it was before that because it was expected. He, at 14, they knew he was going to make a lot yeah, of money. Yeah. It was And, and it, it could have gone wrong at any time. Yeah. He could have got you, injured. You, yeah, you, you break your leg. He got, a, him and his, uh, he had a, a great um, playing partner who played with him. He did get injured, mm. never made it. And the pair of them used to tear up the leagues in Argentina, apparently. Yeah. He was this another prodigy, but he didn't make it. And I think he's, he's, he's gone on to become hooked on on drugs, and uh, I think it is an, it's been an addiction for him. Yeah. Play, playing for Napoli... I think, was, I think he, it's he, fair he, to say he, he, his level of um, cocaine use was beyond the health. Yeah, thing. I mean, I've read his, his, his uh, biography. I don't, I don't know if his autobiography. I don't think he read, I don't think he fucking bothered. But he, uh, he, used to, he used to play on Sunday, and he'd go out after the game, and he'd get back Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, mate. And then he'd start training again Thursday. This is it. But, like, you know, I think that's worth, like... There was definitely sadness to it in some ways, but also yeah, like a tortured soul what, in some ways. Uh, legend, like there's a, there's a video, but one of my favourite football videos of all time. I've always loved this. He's playing in an all star game, right? Yeah. And it's after his career. He's just finished, but he's still like young enough. He's not like you know. He's not like when he was older, where he was a, a bit overweight and everything. He still looks like Maradona. Yeah, and he scores, and obviously he scores a belting goal because he's just playing this like friendly match for the all stars. And as he's celebrating, his mate runs on the pitch with a bag and a key. <laughs> Like puts it under his nose and he's celebrating. He has the little bump and yeah. carries on playing. When, when he did, when he, when he died, I knew it was a heart attack. Right. I said to Mrs. I said, I said "Man, I'm not dead." Like, and, I, and, I, and I, I've rolled up a couple of times last night, almost what, watching his videos and mm. going back yeah, over weird too, footage man. that people have, like you know, just him training and doing mm. all this. And, oh man, I, I, I really, I, I love the, I love the guy. I love him for everything yeah. he was. Yeah, he, really was, he was an incredible icon. And on that, um, our, our you know, thankfully, there were some wise words from Bielsa to help us through this. Like Bielsa, what he said about um, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'll just get it up here. Um, here it is. Um, this is what Bielsa had to say about Maradona. Maradona was an artist. The dimension of his art's impact has an inf- uh, has an infinity of acknowledgement. To give an example, the songs that they've written about him are extraordinary. I may have read ten texts about his passing, and they were emotional. There's recognition of what he gave to spectators in the form of beauty. And as for what he means to us, Argentines in particular, Diego made us feel. It's the fantasy that the idol generates. The idol, the myth, the legend that makes people believe that what that person can do, every one of us is capable of doing. That's why the loss of the idol hits the most excluded and defenceless more, because they are the ones who most need to believe that it's possible to triumph. Amazing that Bielsa, like, he manages to get the the lowest uh, paid people in society again, the, mm. the ones that are the outcasts, the, the poorest in society. He manages to include them in his in his speech and think about them and yeah. and um, and respect them and try to try to That's influence where people. Is from. Yeah. This is it. That's it. That's him. So, oh god, the world is a, a poorer place for having lost Maradona. Um, He's unmanageable, isn't he? As well, Bielsa as a manager, you couldn't. You couldn't manage Maradona. No, it wouldn't it, work, that mix. No. But, it, it was unmanageable. Yeah. He was also unplayable. Yeah, you needed to just let him go. Yeah. And like Bielsa's never going to do that. It's the, uh, you know, so two very different styles. But Bielsa um, has always been as effusive in his praise. He loves the beauty of football. And oh, no one made no, there's no, no one, one made football look more beautiful. No. Like the hair flowing behind him as yeah. he's just swiveling his hips, that short, stocky and, frame. And doing it, doing so it on those cool. pitches. I mean, let, let's just, we've got to talk about the, well, the 1986 quarterfinal mm. because both moments, you know, that both goals are enough to be the pinnacle of any world an icon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that they happened four minutes apart. Yeah, and like, and, uh, and and the pitch is shit. Well, I was watching Gary Lineker talk yeah, about it. Yeah, me too. He was saying the pitch was like newly relayed in and squares it. and it was moving underfoot. I watched it again yeah. after he said that and you can see the ball bobbling. Yeah. And it's really unpredictable where the ball's going to go, but yeah. it, he's so in control. It's like he's on another, he's, in, he's from another realm, isn't he, on that? Yeah, it's well, just, just England defender after England defender flying at him and being the nowhere The pace near. and the power. 
somewhere. He was unreal. Uh, of Maradona, as so, well as the skill. We'll never see another like him. No. So we, um, so, you know. We, we, we got, just to end on this, yeah. and just to say what you said earlier, there'll never be another player like that in the mm. future of football. There can't be. Like, there can't, there can't be. be. He's a one-off. And, He'll uh, never happen again. And that's no. what that's that's where the sadness is, really, well, as well we are all me. we are all lucky to have lived in the same time as I Maradona. feel so blessed to have even seen him in that 90 World Cup. He was past his best by yeah. then. Only, only a little bit. He was, he was on his way out. He's still, mm-hmm. He was still incredible. And he still dragged a really average Argentinian side to the bloody final again. Yeah. And he was he was loads of fun, Maradona. Oh, he was so fun. So, yeah, we're, we're dead, dead sad to lose him. And, uh, you yeah. know, so it felt, you know, there's only one person who Here could in England, he's hit us hard. He's yeah. hit us hard. I mean, and, and, and that's England, the biggest rivals, really, yeah, in yeah, some yeah. respects. And yeah. not well, no, well Argent- Argentina and England have got a huge rivalry. Yeah. And, and, and believe me, there's a few gammons. The same ones that don't like Bielsa. Yeah. It's the same ones that don't think it's Bielsa should have... Shilton. Peter Shilton is still grumpy <laughs> yeah. because he got out-jumped by Mario. And, 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 and a few like who work for the Telegraph yeah. and stuff like that. They just don't fucking like foreigners. No, they're idiots. But so, over here, we, we must say to all our Argentinian Bielsa yeah. citizens, uh, you know, he is an icon over here as well. And, yeah. and we love him. He transcends nationality. He transcends sport. Yeah. And just like in the same way Bielsa does. So we wanted to dedicate Saint of the Week this week to saying rest in peace, Diego Armando. Maradona thank you for everything that you gave us Diego thank, thank you, you so for, much thanks yeah. for the ride yeah, it was man. incredible it's nearly time for our sermon but of course first we must commence with the Lord's Prayer our, our Father, Father who art from, from New Wells Marcelo be thy name. Our king has come, thy will be done, on the pitch as it is in training. Give us each day our daily nutritionally balanced meal, and forgive us our bad passes, as we dispossess those who pass badly against us. Leaders man marking rotation has delivered us from EFL. For thine is the high line, the power and the running. Forever, Forever and ever. ever. Vamos, Bielsa. Bielsa. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done, mm, as ever. As ever. And, uh, and yeah, we didn't burst into fits of laughter like we did, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, the previous take you didn't see. Uh, today, we've got book three yes. of uh, Ricardo, who has just been such a nice bloody guy to have around the place isn't it yeah it's been so enjoyable it's like i've loved uh doing this interview and bringing it to you this week we have got the third installment of this interview. The third and final and yeah we're gonna leave it here with this uh, this is the end of it we've got we've saved some good stuff though we've not uh rinsed it all out we've got some more interesting things if you haven't seen the previous two episodes don't worry you can jump in from here they're not like sequential but this is ricardo lenari good new- word new walls oh, thank you very sequential much. i've never used that v- uh, ricardo lenari he is a new old boys hero and just a South American football hero. He's just an incredible player and played under Bielsa, won titles. If you want to know more about his backstory, uh, the previous two episodes are where you want to be. Uh, this, though, we've got some absolutely cracking stories. Let's get on with it. Yeah, let's get into it. So what we asked uh, first, and this is why I'm excited to bring this one to you, it's one of our favourite topics about Bielsa. We absolutely love what a hard nut Marcelo Bielsa just does fights. He just loves fighting with his fists. Loves scrapping. So we asked Ricardo, as someone who was around Bielsa in person for years, if he had any stories of Bielsa getting into fights. And turns out, who oh boy did he? Oh, he who oh boy did he? So, so the very first uh, year that uh, Ricardo played uh, in the academy, uh, when he was, you know, basically about 15, 16, um, Marcelo would, uh, you know, take the the, the, the kids, uh, the kid players, uh, teenagers, um, to a particular game, right? In this case, uh, place was Juan 23 um, in Rosario. And the game uh, was at nine o'clock and Marcelo uh, asked all players to be there at seven in the morning. This was a Saturday morning at seven o'clock in the winter, in the winter. Okay. And so they were there two hours early. So uh, when they arrived, Marcelo started, 
you know, just banging on the doors, uh, on the portals for somebody to open. He kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And after half an hour, somebody, you know, shouted from the other side of the door, who's there? Well, we come here to play and uh, all these kids are you know, dying here with this cold. Let us in. No, we won't let you in. Let us sleep. Come back at 8.30. So he kept banging and banging and banging and they kept going back and forth. Um, and uh, so finally the guy half opened the door and Marcelo just pushed it, pushed it open um, and everybody stormed in. And then this guy and Marcelo were behind a different door. Well, all the kids were on this side. And so Ricardo, all he could hear was bang, crash, boom, bang, kaboom. And after a little while, they came out and this guy com looked in complete disarray. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, as far as during his time as a professional player in Newell's, he never had any of those instances because Marcelo knew, uh, knew how to keep his place uh, as a professional, but he did have uh, heated uh, um, exchanges mm -hmm. with some of the professional players, but never to the point of, you know, uh, come, going to blows. There we go. Oh, just, I absolutely love it. Such a classic Bielsa scrap story. It's, like, it's just traumatized, isn't it, Ricardo? It's like, it's like, it was like, it was, it was fucking freezing. Seven, uh, seven in the morning as well. Like, just, he, seven in the morning in winter. He's really making that point of like, nah, it was not it was a nice. Bad. Yeah, I love it. Like, this is why it's been so great talking to Ricardo. Get those inside he, skates. He, he just thought, obviously, Bielsa thought that they'll be up at six. Like, yeah. normal, like normal well, the, people the, there's a get preparing for a, for a kids fucking friendly game I know we're playing a kids friendly game later on you're surely doing eight hours of preparation yeah so they'll be, they'll be up at four I imagine the lights will be on Ob Dodge open at six when I used to play for a kids team we would literally rock up half an hour before the match and yeah like, if we were lucky I, I rocked up at half time mate a lot of the time <laughs> Super subs here, lads. I always had someone else's boots. I've never had my own boots as well at Sunday League. <laughs> I, I, was, I was size me. 7 to 11. <laughs> In the end, I had mud boats. That's what I used to call them. Like, they were, I was about size 10. They were size 11. They, was, and they were just covered in mud. And yeah. they're like, I don't know. I, I banged in 50 goals for that club in two yeah. seasons, mate. You should write a letter to Bielsa. Tell Magic Kerr. I told you that before. But anyway, yeah, Bielsa, he's... Hard as nails, isn't he? Yeah, it's so great. I, I, I mean, he's prepared to just bang anyone out. And I, I just it. love that. I love like, the idea of just going into that room and bang, 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 yeah. and just hearing it behind closed doors. It becomes being a kid. I might say, like, that's what your manager does. You're like, if you can do it to him, you can fucking do it to us. You'd be petrified of him. When Ricardo was saying the reason that they didn't have any doubt was because he scared them out of doubt. Yeah. Like, this is a case of it. If, yeah, like you say, if you see your. It's like being in the army, isn't it? Yeah. You, you break them first. Yeah. And then you mold them. And it's little military. You'll be there at seven in the morning. Fuck him out. There's please. a lot of that, um, like, military boot camp thing to what yeah. Bielsa does. Yeah, yeah, I think there is. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a bloody general in an army. What, what's the top of an army? Like if he went field marshal. If he went what's on the top of a field marshal? Uh, no, that's the top one. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Is field it not? Is, no, it, field marshal's number one. But um, yeah. If, are you like, sure? No, yeah. it's not. He is, yeah, yeah. My, my dad was in the army. Field marshal's the top. Really? Yeah. But like, imagine if what, 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 what's above the field marshal? Though? Nothing. There is something. The, above well, the, field. the queen. Really? Yeah. Field marshal's. I number thought one. there was like a couple of field marshals. Nah, there's one field marshal. But there's more than one field. Yeah. <laughs> just like, like, can you imagine though? Like, if Bielsa was like on uh, SAS Who Dares Wins, like setting the instructions, like those instructors from the SAS would be like, calm down, Marcelo, let him off a bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit much. He's a kid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> give him a break. Oh, uh, but yeah, he, he is, it's bloody. That's what we've got respect for the players, the professionalism yeah. they have to go. Any it's player, bloody military. Any any player who has um, not only works under Marcelo but thrived yeah. has worked so hard we can't even begin to understand the level of work and dedication the they have put in every single one of them and like um you and know when they're, when they're not doing that they're in bloody hospitals helping sick children yeah that's and because that's what is installed in them this that, is it to and behave like a good human being and like i think for ricardo a lot of this like sort of um that intensity was harder because he's that sort of mercurial talent you know he, he's just it, yeah. used to, it came easy to him so he you know adding that element of can graph. you imagine like yeah we're, we're playing at nine in the morning. You'd be like, "Oh, fucking hell!" I want to be there at seven. Seven, fuck! You know what I mean? You're a kid. You'd be like, "Oh, oh no. fuck!" It wouldn't have been. I would have been off that team within. Oh, seconds. I would have. I would have. I'd have turned up at nine. 
I because I knew he won't put. I knew I knew he won't play me in first half because I'm because I'm turned up late. I'd hope to get on in second half. I'd take I'd take <laughs> air dry treatment. You wouldn't. I'd be like, come on, mate. Right, uh, but uh, we wanted to carry on with a the theme. Uh, speaking from the correspondence earlier, where we heard Marcelo's thoughts on what makes football beautiful, we asked Ricardo this very same question. We asked him, "What is beautiful about football?" We just we changed the wording. We changed the wording we? slightly, and it, I think it, that influences how he's taken the question. But you don't have to worry because it's not sequential. I love that you get a word of the week on this podcast well, did, every week. Did that work? Mm, sort of, yeah. Almost. Almost. In a kind of non-sequential way. <laughs> so, the I, I, I la- laughed uh, at the first part of Ricardo's answer because it's so graphic. Um, he said that the most beautiful thing he finds in football is the goal in front, the goal area. Mm-hmm. Uh, the opponent's goal area. That's the most beautiful thing for him. Yeah. It's, it's very vivid, right? Um, so he likes uh, to be more of a protagonist uh, than, you know, an ex- spectator of what the other team is doing. He likes to go for the opponent team's uh, goal uh, area than, his, than to keep, you know, zero in his own goal. Um, that's why he does not uh, particularly uh, enjoy Simeones, Mourinho's, Gattuso's style, but he rather enjoys Klopp's Guardiola and Bielsa's, he, whom he considers the number one mm-hmm. uh, in this uh, type of football. We agree. Uh, he likes to watch the type of game uh, as that of Liverpool 4 leads 3. He likes uh, Premier uh, League offense. Uh, type of football, offensive football. He likes high intensity, the type of high intensity that Marcelo um, taught him uh, about 30 years ago. Uh, And he was a first division uh, head coach in Misionarios uh, of Bogota in Colombia, uh, where it was not uncommon at all to uh, see the type of results that went 6-4, 3-2, 7-2, um, he would tell his players that he did not care how many goals they allowed as long as they uh, they scored one more. That would make him happy. Um, and he does not like to play sitting back waiting for the counterattack, but he likes uh, to just be very direct. And he attributes all this to the influence of Marseille. The Kevin Keegan of South American football. I know. I love it. Like, right, even if you are committed to that, why would you tell your players that? Like, that <laughs> you don't care it. how many you let in. Let in defence, don't worry about it, lads. Yeah, but they're know? on the attack, just have a chill. Pill. Your keeper's just having a fag. All right, it doesn't yeah. matter how many goes in. <laughs> Couldn't care less. It's the striker's fault if we lose. No, nah, it's brilliant, though. What, what, that is the philosophy that makes great football, isn't it? Yeah, and I love his answer about the opposition goal. Being... I, I just love watching a football goal. Yeah. I, 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 for his, I have a little uh, park nearby me, and, and there's, a, there's a couple of football pitches, and... I sometimes go walking there with the kids and, and I always end up, you know, staring at it, mm. getting lost. It's just beautiful. The imagination of like me, I even play it's the game in my own it? mind, you know. An empty goal is just possibilities. Just possible. Even an empty football pitch, it yeah. just looks beautiful. There is something about it totally. And yeah, Ricardo is saying that. I could totally see that, that, you know, he's saying, he was saying as well in like in, in his game, that's what he just, that's his focus. That's, that yeah. narrows in on that. When I was a player, I used to watch, I, sometimes when the ball's out, I used to just look at the opposition goal and, and, and I want to fucking hit it in there. Yeah. You know, look at the top card and I'm, I'm going to, I just know where it is. So. I love it. And like, know. what I love about um, asking Ricardo this question is that it reveals a lot about a person, doesn't it? The way they take that very vague question and uh, yeah. like Marcelo took it in a really philosophical way and uh, Ricardo took it in this be- a literal way beautifully so practical sense. way is yeah, it, um, it talks about his passion for attacking football yeah I think that's, that's what he enjoys and, and the way that's that it. and the way that the Premier League is a big draw for around the world because it, it is attacking but and Marcelo's become the best attacking manager in the best attacking league yeah and you know you've got other shite managers that are trying to stop it happening <laughs> yeah. just stop being so shit <laughs> I mean, Bielsa just makes everyone else look shit. I feel sorry for everyone else. No, it, it, is. It, it doesn't have Marcelo as their manager. I mean, what what a 
Well, every Leeds game is just so bloody exciting. And I know, but even that nil nil was just we oh, should have won unreal. ten nil. You know, but but the you know the, we wanted to ask Ricardo about a thing that comes up a lot, right? And so the reverse of that style of intensity is there is the constant talk about burnout. Does burnout mm. happen at the end of a season? Do you get burnt out? So I wanted to ask him at the end of uh, Newell's victorious season when they actually won uh, the league, were you burnt out then? Did, did did was that a thing that you experienced at the end? Uh, I asked him, uh, just to round up your question, Rob, um, about Marcelo's uh, leaving of departure from Newell's in 1992, having won it all. Was this the first case of the type of burnout mm -hmm. that you're talking about? Certainly a lot of people seem to think so. So um, I asked him if they felt as players that they needed uh, a, a, a change in the system, a change in the methods, a change in the coach. Did they internalize that necessity? Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's saying is that they they did not feel they needed a change in the in the system of playing, but they understood that they were not the same people anymore. Okay, they they had grown, and they some of of the players in, in the newest team. Uh, were playing for the national team. So at this point, they were beginning to need a different type of treatment uh, from a, a coach, uh, different different type of approach, uh, you know, relationship coach player. And uh, Marcelo, understandably enough, Ricardo says, was not willing to change uh, his approach to players with the same kind of intensity that he... Uh, displayed and demanded, um, and precisely because of this, without any problems on either side of the fence, um, and respectfully, he stepped aside uh, from his position um, when he realized that he could not ask the same or even any more from those types of players. Uh, so before any problems arose, before any arguments arose, he stepped aside. He realized this himself. Um, and and so he did the same thing in other teams as well. When he realized, with or without the expected results, when he realized that he could not demand anything else from his players, he stepped aside. Um, I asked uh, Ricardo uh, to round up the question here if because this is more like uh, sounds more like psychological emotion, right? Mm -hmm. Psychological, uh, physical. Yeah. Right. If if there was also a physical aspect to uh, to the burnout, and he said that actually the the psychological emotional goes hand in hand with uh, the physical. When you are you know um, not willing to be you know have the same approach from your coach, uh, psychologically this is manifested physically too. It's like your legs also do give. We must give a shout out to Mariano the Wise. Once again, Mariano the Wise, thank you so much. Uh, our translator and interpreter who you are, whose voice you are hearing, who yeah. we've also interviewed on previous episodes. Yeah, it's an integral part of the Bell Survival. He really is. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Like, really interesting to hear that you know, uh, he doesn't. He doesn't think the physical burnout was there. No. He, he thinks the physical came from the psychological. Yes, it wasn't like the legs were done. It was that they no longer could be motivated in the same way to put out the same intensity. Yeah, I think you've got to be psychologically there for it. For when you when you're working this hard, then mm. it's mind over matter, isn't it? And yeah, you, you can yeah. achieve great things when you, when you believe you can do it. But when yeah. when there's a moment of doubt or a moment of regret, and I, I don't want to do this anymore, mm -hmm. then the whole thing's out the window. It does yeah. make you wonder though about when Bielsa may or uh, may leave Leeds United. I mean, yeah. will he leave? Um, uh, under a, you know, a cloud or w will we slowly fade away and, and it'd be disappointing or will he leave would he leave after an amazing bit of success we, possibly i personally my theory is i don't think he'll leave at the end of this season because i don't it'll be incomplete because yeah. he's not got the fans no i don't think he'll see this as a proper season i, I think he'll leave when he feels like he can't add any more to the project exactly i th i think maybe i think one more season after this i think by that point it, it, might, it might depend on where it, 
if hey, he if, fingers crossed. Yeah, if he if he's developing a squad, mm. and you know you've got a couple more world class players coming in. Yeah, and 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 he hey, sees look, that he's comfortable. Like, if, what if Bamford keeps keeps knocking mm. him in? What if Klitsch keeps playing like he's playing? He well, brought the, he, they're his players. The next generation of his players are going to come through because he yeah. signed so many youth players. Oh, that's it. So maybe Sam Greenwood wanna, looks bloody good. Maybe I'll want to carry a few of those through. Got so, Joe Geldar coming in. Fingers crossed. So who knows on that? Um, Charlie. But it's well. good to know, in a way, that the physical burnout isn't as much of a thing as people think. No. From someone who's been there and done it in a Bielsa team, he's saying that it's not uh, that same that same issue that people think it is. So as long as people, uh, you know, as long as the players are bought into Bielsa and he's still, they're still growing, stay positive. There's no reason we can't. So we wanted to ask one more thing uh, from Ricardo. We asked, we wanted to know, did Marcelo ever reveal a personal side to him? Mm. Like, you know, we we cover a lot of the technical. We wanted to know, did he ever, uh, did that ever happen? Did he ever did reach you? out? Yeah. No. So no, not really. Um, Marcelo is does not mix the sentimental with the professional, uh, and so he never got to know that side of him. Mm. Uh, and he's saying, funnily enough, that uh, even uh, participating in a barbecue uh, in an asado with Marcelo is uh, boring because the guy will not talk about anything other than football. Like, isn't that great? It's exactly kind of what you'd expect. <laughs> nope. Yeah, a barbecue with Bielsa. God, for what I'd what I'd give to be at a barbecue no. with Bielsa and talk but, about football, though. Like you're not doing that every day. Oh you're not yeah, seeing completely. Him every day. Yeah. This is the thing, right? Ricardo absolutely loves Marcelo. Like yeah, he does. loves him. He's uh, he, he he credits like his whole life to Marcelo mm. and adores him. But ask someone who adores him, what well, he has those things where he's like, bloody hell. I think they've got quite an intense relationship. Oh yeah. They've been really, through a lot together. Really intense. And yeah, so he's, uh, it, it's in the spirit of fun he's saying this, but it, I bet it's true because he doesn't want to talk about anything but football. So, and like, if you're a footballer, you know, like we're comedians. Well, it is a footballer. If you talk can... about football to footballers. That's what. That's how be also rolls. You do a bit, but like you, you must have been with comedians hanging out where they, they just won't shut up about comedy. And eventually, it's like look, they I don't talk to me, mate. You know that. That's true. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Persona non grata. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, like they, it's, it's, they can learn out of me, mate. Eventually, you want to not talk shop and just chill out. Yeah, totally. But be also like, always mate. on. Let's come out for a barbecue where we can talk more about your yeah. tactical. Do you reckon he's like lining? up sausages in a three three one three <laughs> he's got a little penalty area with the with the yeah. with the burger is like the semi <laughs> this is it doing all like yeah mac macking out such uh, formations and that yeah right and when we get to the final third we play it around the corner of the cob <laughs> gotta be that on it <laughs> so there we go um that is the final part of this interview. six yard sausage box <laughs> <laughs> so that's the final part of our interview with ricardo linari once again we want to say thank you so much to ricardo what an absolute gen yeah. and uh yeah we will it's been uh, a real honor to be to be speaking to such a great man yeah it really was it was a a, a real honor una placer i would say i would say bebe leche but uh that what the fuck would i know <laughs> So reflections, what have we learned? Well, what have we learned today, Mickey? We've learned that Bielsa reads all night about African football. Yeah, we have. We've learned where Bielsa gets his videos from. We've learned that Bielsa talks football at barbecues and makes sausage, little sausage six yard box. He's learned that he will know if you've ever played us a winger, even in an amateur game. Yeah, we have learned that a coach is merely a... Appendix. Appendix, thank you, of uh, the players and staff. Yeah. I think so. That's correct. Yeah, we have learned that. <laughs> not, not very well, apparently. And I think most importantly, we've learned that the world has lost one of the all-time greats. So the great, the great. So uh, you know, with everything we do today is dedicated to Diego, and I think it overshadows everything. Um, it's been a beautiful episode, but this one's for you, Diego. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much to Diego Armando Maradona because you have been the best. So now, to wrap up the episode, as we always do, um, if you're new to this, you may not know that Mickey is quite the archivist. Really am, yeah. He's been down in the bowels of the Bielsa Bible today looking um, for another story to bring to you that you may not have heard anywhere else. We have access to exclusive scripture 
about Marcelo, and we've got another one of these stories today. What what uh, story have you got for us? It's Matt? quite a recent one, actually. Oh yeah, let's tuck straight in. Ooh. Quiet, please. One wintry afternoon, Luke Ayling and Matthias Click were walking round a park, North Leeds, with their families, enjoying the fine scenery, two lovely lakes, an array of Victorian bandstands, and of course, an overpriced cafe. The perfect family day out. Great for the kids, this place, isn't it? Said Matthias in a really fucking weird accent. Well, it is now that Jimmy Savile doesn't live here, replied Luke with a cheeky grin. Jimmy Savile? Who's he? Well, you don't want to know, really. Put it this way, he's almost as bad as Frank Lampard. As the two men contemplated such a horrendous human being, an eerie silence blew across the cold wind. Without warning, they simultaneously unzipped their trousers and began to casually shave their balls. It had become second nature to all Leeds squad now. Showing your well-pruned ball sacks in public was akin to a mother breastfeeding a newborn baby. It was natural. It was all part of God's plan. They're looking great, said every single passerby. Manscapes, shouted the lads in unison. Suddenly, the squeaky sound of rusty wheels and snapping of twigs and undergrowth could be heard as Luke and Matt turned their heads to see Ian Pervader stumbling into view, pulling behind him a pedalo. Not again, whispered Ailing. All right, lads, thought I'd have a little go in the lake. There's room. Fancy joining me. Pedalo's a wicked idiot, man. As everybody stared in disbelief, Pervader casually launched his pedalo into the freezing lake and jumped aboard, his little legs pumping furiously as swans and ducks alike th flew through the air, panicking and squawking at the invasion of their watery home. Within less than a few seconds, Little Ian had reached the middle of the lake, where he began to celebrate wildly. Now this is fucking living, shouted Ian Carlo, as a strong gust of wind blew him off the pedalo and into the shallow waters. Oh no, those waters are nearly three feet deep. He's going to drown. Shout <laughs> to Clitch. Before Matt and Luke. Clitch a vampire, is he? <laughs> I don't know who he is now. <laughs> Before Matt and Luke, as in the Leeds players, not Bross, couldn't even move a muscle, they noticed a figure in a Leeds United tracksuit appear from nowhere and sprint across the lake. Gasps could be heard from the periphery of the choppy waters as he ran across the lake like it was concrete. He picked up Little Ian and casually strolled back towards his playing staff, completely defying the laws of physics and not even breaking a sweat. As Matt and Luke stood there gawping in amazement, God wished them well, promptly provided Little Pervader with a towel and disappeared as quickly as he came. The silence was broken only by the quivering voice of Ian Carlo. Fucking hell! <laughs> Dynamo's let himself go be any. <laughs> anyway, best be off. And with that, Ian Pervader sprinted into the woodland from whence he came. And as a half as a half submerged pedalo bobbed upon the waters of Roundy Park, the Polish prince said aloud. And you thought my accent was going to be the weirdest thing about this story. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> So does Ian Pervader live in the woods? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little guy, he's a little elf, isn't he? <laughs> he just he's just like Ewok. I mean, he's an Ewok, isn't he? Scurries off into the undergrowth. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, just from like Hackney Marsh, isn't he? Where the fuck he came oh from? Oh, God. Well, what a, what a fantastic yeah, find that power was. Incredible, really, to, fantastic. To, to, to come across that scripture. I can't believe that actually happened. I know. It's incredible. Yeah, loads of, uh, loads of eyewitnesses. Thank you. Another crafty mention for our sponsor, Manscaped, there as well. Uh, Manscaped.com forward slash, not forward Whoa. slash, use the code VAMOS to get 20% off. Just do it. Bloody get you free. Free postage. Your get dad needs that bloody weed balls whacker. Balls and nose sorted. Uh, we will, if you want to support us on Patreon, on. It's patreon.com forward slash the Bielsa Bible. Get us all of extras. And uh, what else do I need to put? Oh, if you want to email us, it's the Bielsa Bible at, at gmail.com. Gmail oh, no, it's not the. It's Bielsa Bible without the the. Just Bielsa Bible. Just fucking tweet it's us. It's on the screen if you're watching. YouTube comments. Keep them coming in. We're loving those. And yeah. the emails. Yeah, all, Make all sure the you're subscribed. Thank you. Oh, very if much. you're not subscribed, do it. For, yeah. for Christ, Christ. For crying out loud. So thanks so much. It's been a pleasure as ever. Yeah. But we end as we always do with those three we'll say, words. We'll say, just before, should we say gracias, de, gracias, gracias Diego. Diego? Yeah. Yeah. And Why vamos, not? Bielsa, Carajo. Carajo.